Well, day two of testimony wrapped up on Friday in the double murder trial of Alex Murdoch, the disbarred and disgraced South Carolina attorney charged with killing his wife and son. <coughs> Excuse me, Murdoch <clears throat> has not, has pleaded not guilty. Here's CNN's uh, correspondent Randy Kay with more on what we heard from Murdoch on the night of the killings. We had a wonderful marriage, wonderful relationship. In yours and Paul's relationship? As good as it could be. This is Alec Murdoch being interviewed in the investigator's car hours after his wife and son were murdered. I mean, I pulled up and I could see him. I could see it was... <laughs> and I could see his brain on... <laughs> <clears throat> and I ran over to Maggie and uh, actually I think I tried to turn Paul over first I tried to take their pulse on both of them mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, you know I called 911 um, pretty much right away that conversation took place at nearly 1 a.m. on June 8th 2021 for the first time, we hear him explain how he says he tried to reach his wife and son with no luck. I got up, I called Maggie, didn't get an answer, and I think I texted her. And she's very good about answering the phone, so that was odd, or calling me back, mm -hmm. so that was odd, but it wasn't that big a deal. I checked, texted her at 9.08, going to check on M, be right back. And then I texted her at 9.47. That must be when I started to come back. I think I called her before that. But let me make sure. Uh, pretty sure that I called her 9.45. And then I tried Paul. Alec Murdoch told investigators that he tried to check the pulse on both his wife Maggie and son Paul. Yet Alec didn't appear to have any blood on him, this investigator told the court. Did you see anything that appeared to be blood on his shoe? I did not. Did you see what appeared to be blood on Alex Murdoch's hands? I did not. And when the defense lawyer asked her why she thought his clothes were freshly washed. He's sweating and they are dry, so I would say yes. Still, on cross-examination, the defense tried to poke holes in the idea that Alec Murdoch may have washed his clothes after allegedly killing his wife and son. Well, let me ask you, in your mind's eye, that night on June 7th, did he look like someone had just blown his son's head off, spattered going everywhere? Again, I, I can't say that for sure. Also in court, a crime scene investigator at one point pulled out Paul Murdoch's bloody sneakers that he was wearing the night he was killed. That was certainly a dramatic moment. And that same witness who was testifying for the state said that investigators didn't search Alec Murdoch's home until September 13th, 2021. That would have been more than three months after the double murder. No doubt the defense, when it does cross-examination on Monday, will use that to continue its theme of an alleged sloppy investigation. Amra? Uh, wow, so many fascinating details there. Randy Kay, thank you for your reporting. Joey Jackson is a criminal defense attorney and CNN legal analyst. Uh, Joey, I know you've been quite busy, so thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, first off, Joey, I mean, it seems like there is a lot of smoke there. For, what did you make, first of all, of what we heard from that f officer who was first to respond at the murder scene and how he said the, that Alex Murdoch didn't cry when he saw him and that he immediately offered up a possible motive. Yeah, Amber, good morning to you. Uh, you know, it, this is a tough case in general, I think, for the prosecution in as much as we are in a really DNA era, right? We're in an era where people need to see, jurors need to see, know, and observe in the event someone's guilty. In this particular case, just broadly speaking, before the specifics of your question, you look and you say, well, is there any surveillance which would indicate that he did it? Well, no. Are there any eyewitnesses that would indicate that he did it? Well, no. Is there anything else that you could suggest where, other than circumstantial evidence, to say that he actually is the one who is responsible? Answer, no. 
And so then you go to the specifics and you ask me the question with respect to, as we look there, that he's charged with the murder of his son and his wife, right? The victim was found shot to death in the family property June of 2021. And of course, he's pleaded not guilty. But people have different ways of which they respond, Amra, in the event, for example, of a death, right? You cross-examine someone, you indicate that he wasn't crying, but you did say that he seemed upset. Is there a standard way in which someone should react in a situation like this? Would you believe the two people might respond the same or may they respond differently? So it's always tough to make judgments with respect to the demeanor, the comportment, and the attitude of someone in a horrific situation to the extent, Amra, that everyone is different. So that in and of itself, my answer is, is not outcome determinative as to his guilt. What about this question about why he didn't have any blood on his clothes or his hands, even though uh, Alex Murdoch said that he checked the pulse of his wife and, and, and son? How do you explain that? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, that could be problematic in as much as you could do, say one of two things. Right. You could say that he didn't have it uh, in as much as he wiped it off. Right. That's what the prosecution is alluding to. The fact that he tried to clean himself up. But then on the other hand, right, you're the police. You've conducted an investigation. Did you attempt to make any efforts to determine whether there was blood you didn't see? Did you do any other investigation to see whether or not there was blood at any other parts of his body? Did you get a warrant to make an assessment as to his home or anything else? Did you look at other areas for which you might suggest that he could have wiped the blood off? Did you find a cloth? Did you do anything else? And so I think that there's always two narratives, just like your other question, was he setting up an alibi? Well, Maybe instead of setting up an alibi, he was simply trying to determine what was going on and giving you information so that you officers could get to the bottom of it. Maybe instead of wiping off blood, right, he actually just based upon where the spatter was, there was not the blood and that particular location, right, of the wrist or where he was trying to do it. So there's innocent explanations and then there are nefarious explanations. Trials, Amra, are about the prosecution pointing to the nefarious and the defense pointing to the innocent and the jury making a determination as to which of those two narratives makes sense. Okay, so it sounds like this is going to be an uphill battle in terms of proving with evidence uh, for, for prosecutors. What do you expect the defense to do or what would their strategy will be? Yeah, I think they'll continue to, to pound on what they have. I mean, the fact is, is that what type of investigation did you do? Where is the specific proof in the evidence? Where is the connection to him? Well, uh, that is Alex Murdoch. What is the motivation as to why he would do this? How are you suggesting without evidence with respect to eyewitnesses that he did, without surveillance that he did, without blood on his uh, all about his body part? Now, look, here's here's the point. When you heard the cross-examination that we did of his defense attorney, Amra, he was pointing out that in the event that there's splatter and some, you know, I mean, it's pretty graphic that I won't get into, but if people, you're shooting him in the head area, you would expect blood to splatter. So was it on his shirt? Was it on his face? What is it on his pants? Did you make any analysis? Did you make any assessment? So what do we have? Circumstantial evidence because you think he's guilty? That's not enough, ladies and gentlemen, and I think that's where the defense will go and continue to hammer away in the case.